Okay, so here we are. The first step after getting the parts is to remove the road wheel. Eight lug nuts. Uh, we use a lug wrench. Uh, just like if you were changing a tire, you had a flat tire and you're going to change a spare. Same procedure, only you leave it off. And uh, then after you get the lug nuts loose, we'll go over here. Next step is to uh, jack the vehicle up and safely support it with a jack stand so that uh, in the event the, the jack itself uh, can't hold the vehicle up, the jack stand will provide you with a little bit of uh, extra protection. Okay, so now that we have the uh, wheel off, we can see the... Uh, brake rotor here, the studs where the wheel was attached, and this is the caliper that we're going to be replacing along with, you can barely see them right here, are the disc pads. Um, the caliper comes off fairly simply. There's a retaining bolt up here and another retaining bolt down here some clips and uh, I think that's about it to take it off. Oh, um, back here, um, let's see, we can see it right through here if we see my my finger waving right here. There's a, a nut that needs to be unfastened that uh, holds the brake line onto the caliper. Um, so we'll undo that and that will require us to bleed the brakes. Uh, bleeding the brakes is just when you disconnect a, a hydraulic line air can come into that line so when you reconnect it you have to bleed the air out and there's a there's a little screw uh, right here that's used to do that. So after you get everything connected again, this is the high point, and you just pump the brakes, open this valve, a little air will come out, and then you tighten the tighten the uh, valve back up. They call it, it's called a bleeder valve, and that effectively gets the air out of the line. So now all you have in the brake line is the hydraulic fluid. If air is in the line it will compress and your pedal will feel soft and your brakes might not work very good. So it's important to bleed that air out of the line. But that'll be one of the last steps we do here after we put things back together again. Uh, this gives you an idea. These are the these here are the new parts and that gives you an idea of you know the amount of rust and corrosion and so forth the ones on my car aren't really that bad but of course these are nice and clean um, parts will, will slide a lot easier because there's no rust and we're going to lubricate all the all the surfaces where things need to move around and that's going to improve everything this is where the um, brake line connects with that bolt I said goes through there and goes through the line and then right back here is the bleeder valve that I was talking about that's used to you open this up uh, well first of all you you close it pump the brakes up open this valve and psh, air will come out because the air moves to the nearest point of, of um, extraction, I guess you'd say, it, it tends to move to the top or highermost point where it can get out. When you relieve the pressure, the air comes out along with some brake fluid. And if you do it in a jar that has brake fluid in it, that avoids drawing any air back in while you're tightening up this, this uh, bleeder valve. And you repeat the process and do it until you don't have any more air bubbles. 
Um, it's fairly simple, but it's a two-man operation, so I'll have to get a helper to help me do that. So to keep from having fluid dripping all over the place, um, I took the little pillow block, it's called, and stuffed it in this in this bottle to catch any drips of brake fluid coming out. It'll also kind of give me an idea of um, how much brake fluid is coming out and how much I'm probably going to be needing to add when I put things back together again. So in the meantime, this gets us freed up from the uh, from the caliper and we can take this caliper off and put the new caliper caliper and pads uh, back on. So let's do that. First of all, we need to grease the parts that are going to be sliding back and forth. That way, hopefully, it'll keep them from binding up like the ones I have on the van now did. So this is what you use. It's important to use the right lubricant um, for the right job. In this case, we are using, let me see if I can get this bigger so we can see it. I am using synthetic brake grease. It comes in a little package. You just pop it open and spread the grease where it needs to go. So we'll do that now. Okay, so in order to install the caliper, thing we need to do is put the put the uh, brake shoes or the brake uh, pads inside the caliper, and they're they're clumsy and awkward to deal with. So they include nicely enough in the kit a couple of rubber bands to hold the pads away, so that this will be very easy to install uh, back in its. Uh, in its mounting bracket over the over the rotor uh, and then we'll we'll keep moving along we'll connect that uh, hydraulic line we disconnected and we still need to put in the uh, clips uh, right here there's a uh, there's a clip and a little keeper down here and they just basically fit back in like this in that position like so and uh, as you can see this whole thing slides slides around real nicely if you look close you can see some lubricant right here I lubed all the joints all the places where any metal to metal contact is being made I lubricated that with the uh, brake grease I showed you earlier so that's uh, way vast improved over what we had and I think that's going to solve the uh, the lockup problem on the brakes and um, so we'll just continue putting this together. I've got a helper now that's going to give me a hand bleeding the brakes so this should be a simple process once we get um, the whole thing back together again. That's it. Okay just to make it clear what we've done we've changed the brake pads which are now kind of hidden down in here and we change the caliper we have yet to bleed the brakes we'll do that as a single operation for both sides uh, after the other caliper and brake pads on the other side have been installed once we've kind of drained out the fluid from both sides then we will go about bleeding the air that uh, is in the system out so that we uh, have a good solid pedal under our foot for braking. So this side's complete and um, I want to show you uh, hopefully you can hear that we have movement this caliper floats across it's floating back and forth this way and that's what it's supposed to do and it finds its own center and then uh, just floats until the next time you need to use the brakes 
you apply some hydraulic pressure and squeeze the pads in. When they're done doing their work, just natural road vibration will cause this to kind of move back and forth and find its own center. So neither one of these pads are binding against the rotor and creating that tremendous amount of heat that I was feeling uh, before. And as you can see, the wheel spins almost effortlessly with with hardly any any drag at all. So as these pads were in, that drag will go away entirely and it'll just spin freely. So that's it. On over to the other side, but I'm not going to film the other side because um, I filmed this operation. So the other side is just exactly the same as this side, no difference. Okay, side two is complete. All the wheels are back on. I tightened all the lug nuts so no more wheels go flying off the van. Um, kitty litter is a real good way of cleaning up spills if you make any. Uh, you can pour it on and then let it absorb the grease or, or water or fluids and then sweep it up <clears throat> and dispose of it responsibly. So I took the van out and did a little road test. Um, I drove it around a area where there weren't other cars or traffic and made some emergency stops and everything seems to be back to normal with the exception of one thing that's a good thing and that is that when you are stopped at a stop sign for example and you release your foot off the brake the van begins to creep a little bit under idle. Now before I change the calipers and the brake pads it would just sit there like it was frozen in place until I hit it with the throttle if it was on straight flat ground. It was pointed downhill of course it would creep a little but uphill it wouldn't even move and uh, so that's a good indication that the wheels were binding up uh, pardon me the rotors were binding up with the uh, brake pads the floating caliper wasn't floating and this whole um, rusty corroded situation was leading to things binding up creating heat expanding the rotors and uh, making for a real um, re really unsafe condition and um, uneconomical as well because the horsepower of the engine has to overcome the drag of the binding rotors so all in all I'm really happy with how things turned out and uh, I'm not going to go into bleeding brakes. Uh, the reason is, is you really need to know what you're doing. So um, this is something that if you don't have a mechanic friend or somebody that can help you bleed the brakes or you yourself don't know how to bleed brakes, don't attempt this repair because it's one thing that you have to do. If you don't do it, you won't have any brakes. So please. Um, do the responsible thing and uh, get some help if you don't have the experience to do this yourself. That's it for now. Like this video. Uh, give it a, a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it. Subscribe. I appreciate all the people that subscribe to my channel, to this video channel. And comment as you see fit. Thanks for watching. So long.